morning, everybody. Teresa here. It is um, September 18th, 2015, Friday morning. Gosh, this week went by fast, fast, fast. Um, still kind of waking up. Been awake since about 10, but takes me a while to really get motivated. Got something stuck to the roof of my mouth. That's better. I was eating one of these for breakfast. Um, and I'd only had a couple bites of it. So they already took all my medication and stuff. And if I don't eat something, it upsets my stomach. So I just took a couple bites. And yeah, it's, it, I mean, I like it. It's peanut butter crunch. And these aren't overly sweet. So it's really nice. I've talked about them before. My... Dietitian and my surgeon recommend the, the Premier Protein. You can buy a great big pack for not too much uh, at Sam Club. Or probably Costco. Um, it is about 10 till 11 a.m. Uh, and yes, you can see my hose line. They're starting to dissipate some. I found out. Uh, uh, you know, after I uh, do my teeth and, and if I'm going to wear contacts. I know you guys haven't seen me wear contacts in a while because of the allergies. And But after I, you know, wash my face and, and get ready and, and, you know, throw my hair back uh, and stuff, I always put... Somebody asked me a while back, they said they, they really liked how, how my, my skin looks and how soft and stuff. And, um... I don't have that many wrinkles, even though I'm 51. And, um, uh, I just, I don't do anything to my face. I just, uh, uh, use that. It's called Nivea. And if I'm pronouncing it wrong, please remember I'm hearing impaired, but it's N I V E A. And it's just a, a facial moisturizer. I just use just a tiny amount every morning. But anyway, I found after doing that, it helps these lines, um, you know, because it, it's just, you know, where the holes have been, where the nasal canyon has been, so it helps those go away a little bit quicker. Anywho, slept really well last night. I've been not... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been not taking a nap in the afternoon, and that's helping me sleep better at night. So, right now it is 53 degrees out. It's only supposed to get up to 66 and uh, down to 35. Um, I tell you what, yesterday uh, in the evening I went out to pick some tomatoes. You know, we're getting the last of the tomatoes. They could snow anytime in this area. And in fact, Jackson and Yellowstone have already gotten snow. Ah, uh, you know, that's what Wyoming climate does. But I went out pick some more of my little cherry tomatoes and stuff. I knew there was some more ripe. I, was gonna, I had a salad last night for dinner and I wanted some tomatoes. I wasn't out there, but maybe five minutes. I had to come in and use my albuterol inhaler because, uh, you know, I know that fall is... is a harder time for us asthmatics and, and people with allergies. Usually it doesn't affect me that fast. Usually spring is worse for me, but... Whew! So, yesterday went really well. Got a lot done. My Etsy shop is open. The link you'll always find down below. If you'd like to take a look at it, and you'd like to purchase through there, I take PayPal now. I take direct checkout, and I also take money on you can also do custom orders with me through there. Or you can message me on here. Or you can message me on Facebook. Um, it was super easy. Um, each listing, like for the scarves, I put five different pictures. So you can pick the color. You know. And if you want to order more than one, I have some specials. Just ask me about them. And I'll tell you what they are. You know. So. That being that. Um, I worked some on the shawl that, uh, 
my friend Mary has ordered, and you'll see, I don't know if you really can see, yeah, you can. They're starting to go into the red now. They started with just a little bit of the white, and now it's starting to go into the red. It's going to be very pretty. Um, uh, and then I worked some more on the afghan, of course. And I have like 13 more road, and then I'll go back into the blue. So those are both already paid for. Now I way under because I was new and stuff, and I only charged my friend forty dollars. And that all that did, did was cover the material for this afghan. I should have charged him at least 120. But lesson learned. You know he did pay me 50, give me a 10 dollar tip, but. I'm like, man, that was dumb. I mean, but, you know, you got to, you know, I've given away a lot of things and and stuff. You got to, you know, do some promotion and stuff in any business. And like I said, I'm not new at this. Um, so, anyway, uh, also got my AdSense going on here. So, I'm actually, you know, monetized now, fully monetized. You know, and I figured why not because everybody else is doing it or so most other people are doing it. So why not? I mean, I'm working hard on making this dream happen. Yeah, uh, you know, I still have the GoFundMe. Um, you know, if anybody would like to donate, that would be awesome because I'm working as hard as I possibly can, guys, to make this happen. I'm not just sitting back begging for money. You know, I am working as hard as I can. Christmas is coming. Start thinking of, uh, take a look at my Etsy. Start thinking of um, and making a list of people that may be hard to shop for. Maybe you know you're going to be in an office draw for, you know, it's all full of women. So you're going to have to get somebody a gift. A scarf is a wonderful gift, you know. And if you're not sure of the color, I have multicolored ones. You know, I have one that's called Disco, and it's got just about every color in it. Um... You know, or a pair of slippers, or, um, uh, you know, a hat, um, you know, you know, different things like that. Um, maybe your niece or your nephew, I mean, you know, maybe you want to get them a shawl, I mean, you know, maybe you don't know what to get grandma and she, she's got everything, but she's always complaining she's cold. What a shawl, or even a lab afghan, is great. You know, um, just think about that. Or a nice pair of my slippers are super, super soft. And, you know, maybe a nice pair of slippers for them. Basically, if they're in a wheelchair or if they have diabetes and they have circulation problems, those feet get cold. And they don't even realize those feet are getting that cold. And, you know, so, like I said, you know, I have many, many ideas. Later on, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll have any incense for sale up there. Um, um, I hope we're going to have some jewelry for sale on there. You maybe have some woodworking. Um, I don't know. We're thinking about building, uh, bird houses again, and I custom paint those. Um, like I said, I'm doing everything I possibly can, uh, uh, to, you know, uh, earn money. So, on to something else. My mother-in-law. I'm going to tell you how it is. I have one of those meddling mother-in-laws. Now, I used to love this lady to death. I used to consider her more of my mother than, than my own mother. Until I saw sides of her that just yeah. Now, she'd always run around and talk about everybody. I mean, there is a saying in the family that you tell her, you know, it, it spreads faster than if you did a bulletin board. You know. Yeah. And it's always bothered me. I don't like the, the gossip here. Well, many years ago, my husband and I had some problems. And we were separated for a short bit. Obviously, we worked those out. But she took that time to run all over town and gossip about me. 
and embellish it, greatly embellish it. First of all, it wasn't any of her business. Second of all, why would you do that when your grandchildren are in the same town? This is a small town. You know, I mean, she even told some of my, my kids as teachers, and, I mean, everybody, you know. She even told my uncle, who is now deceased, who went and told my elderly grandmother, the one I've talked about that I love so much, Maxine, who was homebound, on oxygen, full-time, congestive heart failure, the whole nine works. Who didn't know anything about this, because why would she need to know? She's elderly, you know, she's got her own problems. Who then called up my mother, who then, you know... I mean, this is how sadistic she was. Well, gee, imagine her surprise when we work things out. Okay, years go by. You know, I tell her at that point in time, you're not welcome in our, in our home with my husband's permission. I even told him, well, if you want to have her over, that's fine. You know, I'll just go in another room. That would never tell me couldn't to his mother. You know, he agreed with me. We cut off contact. A few years go by, Christmas time. Weeks in an olive branch, which she gladly accepts. And life goes on. Thought everything was okay. Didn't realize she was still talking shit about me. Till one of her daughters, all pissed off at us, told us that. But what happened was when my husband got diagnosed with diabetes, shortly after that, you know, I, I, talked, I told you guys he got very sick from one of the medications. They thought he had pancreatic cancer. For a while, I mean, he turned yellow. His eyes turned yellow. His skin turned yellow. His, his, his urine looked like the color of rust. You know, he was off work because he could not work. Um, you know, I'm taking him for constant medical testing. Um, you know, they wanted to cut him open into exploratory surgery, which we said no on, you know. She wrote an email and accidentally sent one to me. They wanted everybody to pray for her son because he had hepatitis C. Now, didn't have hepatitis C. It could have cost him his job. See, he was a manager of one of the convenience stores here in town. A large chain. You know, and they also have hot food and stuff. That could have cost him his job. And it was totally unreal. And when I asked her why she did that, she said, Well, I was just upset because you guys weren't answering your phone, you know, or my text messages. For one day, we were busy. We were upset. You know, you know, she's calling, we're in doctor's offices and stuff. I would have let her know when there was something to know. You know, but there was no excuse for a woman her age to, you know, and I said, you know, I just cut off contact. It's like, you know, you had no right to do that. You know, because this is, this is the group email that's going out to everybody. You know, I mean... You know, clear across the country and everything. Well, so her daughter's getting involved. Which didn't set well with me either. Didn't set well with my husband. My husband is so sick and stuff. Nobody gives a shit. So I just cut off contact again, you know. Because, I mean, she's the type where you'd ask her to please... Don't just show up at our house, because she would do that. Oh, please call before you come over. Well, my sister-in-law lives a half a block away. She'd call from there and say, oh, I'm in the neighborhood. I'm coming over. Two-minute notice. No. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, when my husband got a new job, I asked her, please, please don't just show because she loves to just show up at, at his work when at wherever he's working and we'll wait for an hour or so it doesn't matter how busy he is he's asked her i've asked her 
for for a while she didn't show up, but for the past couple of years now she's been showing up at his work again. Now, come on. It's like right now, he's having a, they're having a great big sale at this dealership. They've got professional, you know, they've got some people in, you know, that, that help help bring people in. And, I mean, they've got all these managers and, and all these people in. And here she comes again to gossip. And to gossip because my granddaughter texted her and told her that our station wagon doesn't work and Papa has the Jeep. Well, okay, the station wagon isn't broken down. No, he's not driving it because I would rather have him drive the Jeep. It's safer for him. No, we don't have the, the station wagon tagged right now. But that's none of her business. If we wanted her to know this, we would have told her this. You know, because she's like, well, you know, you know, if Teresa needs a ride anywhere, I'll be glad to give her one. Woman, I would bleed to death out here before I would ask you for a ride. I have friends in town if I really need a ride or I'll call a cab. But otherwise, like my husband told her, his mom, we like to run our errands together. He prefers to drive the Jeep. It's safer. I'm not one to run all over town. I never have been. Since I work because I have my own business, which is simply Twee Bing. Um, ah, I have to sit here and, and loom and, and crochet to, to make the product to sell. But I'm not one to run all over town. We run our errand together. We like to be together. It's none of your business. And no, she wasn't just being nice. What it is. She's heard rumors that I'm going to have surgery. She wants to know the details. She wants to know the details because we don't tell her anything that's going on in our life. She'll ask and my husband will go, everything's going fine. You know, they could have amputated both breasts, one arm and one leg on me and he still would tell her I'm doing fine because I've asked him, please, does your mom ask about me just say I'm fine. I don't want anything to do with her. She is running around and, and gossip about every family member there is, and I hate that. If you're not going to come and talk to me, my, my grew up that way. My mom would sit there and, and lambast my dad and cut him down to, he was about this tall, to my grandmother, and then go home and act like all lovey-dovey, and I never understood that. You know, or I hear him talking about, this female or that female, and then they see him and, oh, hi, da, 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 da. like, really, you just talked about how this is the worst person in the world. I mean, I never have understood that. I, mm, no, you're going to get the straight facts. If I don't like you, you're going to know it. I mean, I, I w probably wouldn't say anything mean to you, but I wouldn't, you know, if I had to, I would say hello to you, but it would be very business matter of fact, but otherwise, I would just, Pretend you're not there. But she never will quit. There is no respect. She will sit there and, and stand there for 45 minutes. No matter how busy my husband is. Now he's dealing with people purchasing expensive vehicles. He doesn't need his mommy standing there. He is so sick of it. He goes, I'm going to lose my temper yet. You know. And no, it isn't that he's caught in between us. He, he agrees with everything that I feel. He wants nothing to do. There's another reason that we're going to be moving. Because we're so sick of this crap with the family. Um, you know. I mean. She'll sit there and act that way. But they don't invite us to any family function. They haven't. I mean they didn't invite us to. His his father's last birthday celebration. It's like uh, no. No. You know you don't need to invite us. We wouldn't come anyway. Um. Somebody asked if my eyes are really that dark blue. Yeah, they really, really are that dark of a blue. Just thought I would, yeah. They're just really dark blue. Um, but anyway, I look like my grandmother. My husband, that's enough about the, the mother-in-law. My husband ran into this elderly woman that remembered bowling with my grandmother. Remember I told you guys before, my grandparents owned a bowling alley. 
Well, so my grandmother, you know, bowled all the time. And my grandfather, we all did. Well, she remembered, she actually bowled on a team with my grandmother. And stuff, that was pretty neat. She saw a picture of me, and she's like, oh, she looks so familiar. And my husband said, well, yeah, she looks like her grandmother. And she looked at the picture again, and she goes, she does. She looks a lot like her grandmother. And I'm like, thank you. That's a very big compliment. Thank you. Um, you know, I will take that as a compliment. I do look a lot like great my grandmother, thank goodness. You know. But um anyway, I just had to vent a little bit. I don't like meddling prying people. I mean you won't call me up. I mean his mother could text him and she has when he's not at work. She could email him. She can call him. She doesn't need to and she keeps going, Oh, I was just in the neighborhood. You weren't just in the neighborhood. It's all businesses in that area. You weren't just in the neighborhood. You know? But. She needs a new hobby. She's one of these ones that runs around. And she will literally go from family member to family member to family member. Just drop it in. No respect to home life or anything. Um, and uh, gossiping. Gossip, gossip, gossip. I mean, it's supposed to be a a uh, lay priest in a church. Really? I've told it straight out before. You know that that is, you know, a sin. You know, that is against the biblical teachings. But I just ignore her. She's scared of me. I'll tell her straight out how it is. I won't pretend. So that's why she steers clear of this old broad. And I'm like, you know, don't act that way. Because, I mean, we've been married longer than she was ever married to uh, uh, her husband. They got divorced before their 25th wedding anniversary. So, you know, cause she told me one time I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, that she was the only Mrs. Heidi. And I thought... Really? I've been married longer than you have. <laughs> you know, I, I think I've earned the title of Mrs. Heidi. Whatever. You know. Like I said, I like it that she's scared of me. Because she knows I'll tell her straight out how it is. I won't pretend. And I won't pretend if we're in public either. I won't disrespect you unless you push the envelope. And then I'm going to tell you how it is. I may do it in a low voice, but I will let you know in no uncertain terms that no. And my family hates me for that reason, too. I will not be fake and phony. You know, they want us all to get together and play happy family, you know, like somebody dies. No, uh-uh. Okay, funerals are for the living and not the person passed away. So if I have no connection with any of you people that are still alive, there's no reason for me to attend that funeral. I can say my goodbye. To my loved one, like my grandmother, in my own damn way. I'm not a sheep. I don't follow anybody else's, you know, scenario. I do my own thing. So, whatever. That's all I got to say about that. I have no plans for this weekend. My husband's uh, working both Saturday and Sunday. Um, going to ask him sometime... Uh, this weekend, though, probably Sunday, if he could quickly shampoo the carpet for me. Not a little musty. Now the house closed up and stuff and not running the uh, swamp cooler. Did I run it yesterday? I just ran the fan part. I didn't run the cooling part at all. Like right now, I've got windows shut and stuff. Um, haven't turned the heat back on yet. Um... Everybody else doing well. I'm just planning on um, working, working, working this weekend. Um, no, I haven't been in the art room lately. I need to get in there sometime. Cause I've got the oxygen guy. He comes every six months for a uh, check up on the machine. See how I'm doing, etc. He's coming Monday sometime. So, I need to kind of straighten up my art studio. Cause that's where the oxygen concentrator sits in. 
So, I've got glitter all over the floor and stuff. Uh, big surprise, right? <laughs> so, I need to do a bit of work in there, sweep that floor. Straighten it up. I'm not sure if I'll work on that painting or not. It's not feeling that painting. <laughs> not feeling it. So. But I haven't really sat in there and really thought about it either. <gasps> it's been working. And that's what I'll be doing today. So, I hope everybody's doing well. What are your plans for this weekend? Anything fun? I tell you what, next fall I plan on wherever I am. Hopefully we're in Florida. But I'm going to travel to another state or something that has a corn maze or something like that. Because I can't get out and do that yet. I don't want to do me one of them haunted hay rides. So, that's what I plan on doing. I'm making a list. I'm looking on... On eBay, on some of the size 18 clothes. And I think right before surgery, I may buy me like a mixed lot. You know, I think they have some, they have them real cheap for like $20. You know, some people have surgery and, and they need to get rid of their clothes and, and uh, uh, so they can buy more, you know, the smaller size. So I thought that would be a neat thing to do. Go ahead and buy some new clothes like that. You know, just to set aside. So, I'm just looking at it. But anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Remember, I love you guys. And I think you're awesome. And I will talk to you later. Bye.